Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. This is just going to be a getting started guide if you're interested in using the Pi for emulation. So here is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus going over the hardware. You have your Ethernet port, four USB ports. On the other side here you have a micro USB port for power, HDMI output, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now if you ordered one of these, this is all you're gonna get. They do have kits that come with everything else that you need like a micro SD card, power cable, the HDMI cable. So along with the 3B Plus model, I also got this 32 gigabyte micro SD card, the Canakit 2.5 amp power supply with the switch. The Pi itself doesn't have a power switch, so it's recommended you get one of these switches to go along with the power supply. And I know everybody was making recommendations on what case to get, but I settled on this very generic clear case. It comes with some screws and some little bubble things. I think for like feet, if I wanna keep it down on something, it won't move. But I went with this case because I have so many classic systems that already look like a small NES or a small PlayStation. I wanted to be able to differentiate my Raspberry Pi from everything else. I settled on this just generic clear case. I like the clear case a lot. One thing I did forget to get were the heat sinks and I heard that those are actually very useful. So I'm going to be ordering those and getting those as well. So make sure you have all those components. I'll put a list of everything you will need hardware wise in the description so you don't forget anything. And I'll make a note of which things are optional. Technically the case is optional, but you don't want this just sitting around and dust collecting on it. You want some kind of case for it. So for the software side of things, the way this works is you flash an image to the computer itself. They're called images. I'm going to be using RetroPie, the newest version, which is 4.4. And you can find it here on the RetroPie site. I'll make sure and put the website of anything that we use in the description for you. Since we're using the Pi 3, all we do is click this button right here and then we get the image. So ours looks like a .gz file. Don't do anything with this file. This is the file you need. It looks like something you can unzip. Don't try and unzip it. There's no need. As you can see here, the size of this file is 684 megabytes. To flash that image to the computer, you need a program called Etcher. It is super easy to use. It's like a two-step process and you're done. If you go to the website here, It'll automatically detect what system that you have and give you the version that you need for your operating system on your computer. I'm running Windows 64 bit, so that's what it's offering me. Very, very helpful, very useful. So I'm going to put all my hardware together and I'm going to meet you back here where we're going to flash this image. OK, I feel much better now that this is in a case and I'm not actually handling everything and I have my hands, you know, on the circuitry and all that stuff. And it fits the case very nice. It's snug, all the ports are available. Something I didn't mention at the beginning of the video is where the micro SD card goes after you've flashed it. On the bottom, I don't know if you can see, of the Raspberry Pi, you'll see a little slot here. And then the card just goes right in that slot. So the one thing I didn't mention, sorry about that. But we'll go over that in a second. But first we need to insert the micro SD card into our computer so we can flash this image. I'm just using a very generic card reader. Assembling the power supply is super easy as well. It's just a regular plug. And on the other end is the micro USB port. You're gonna take that port. Normally you would put this into the Raspberry Pi itself, but because we have the switch, you want to attach it to the Pi switch, just like that. And at the end of this switch, this is what goes into the Raspberry Pi. You can see here, Pi switch. So I've inserted the micro SD card into my computer. It looks like it may have already picked it up. I didn't even touch anything yet. So we're gonna go to select image. And here's our image on our desktop. I'm gonna click open. So our image is selected. Our card is selected in the F drive. All you do is click flash. So you can see here, the image is gonna take up 2.42 gigs on the card. You can see here how fast it is flashing it and approximately how long it's gonna take for this image to be flashed. It's very quick. The faster card you get, the faster this will go as well. While this is still being flashed, I do wanna say that the community behind the Raspberry Pi is huge and extremely helpful. I haven't had the opportunity to really interact with anybody there, but I know they have discords, they have 
websites, everything to help you with doing anything you want with your Raspberry Pi. And I'm sure I will make use of those resources in the future. All right, so I have all the hardware hooked up to my Raspberry Pi. You can see here, there's another step. It's going to validate that the flash went through correctly. So it looks like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, about five and a half minutes. So right now attached to the Pi, I have the HDMI cable hooked up, the power cable with my switch and ethernet cord and a controller. I'm using my 8-bit Doe Famicom 30 controller. Also, I forgot to mention that the board has built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. And you will need an internet connection for what we're going to do once this is finished, how we're gonna get our stuff onto the system. You'll wanna have an internet connection for it. Okay, looks like Etcher is all finished. Ignore this pop-up right here that says format disk. That's just now because the micro SD card isn't in a format that Windows recognizes, but the flash is complete one successful device. We're going to close that. So I safely removed the micro SD card from my computer. I'm going to insert it into the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm going to boot it up. I'm going to take a look. When you first turn on your Raspberry Pi, RetroPie and the emulation station will begin its startup process and you will see this screen. So what it's asking you to do is hold down the A button for a few seconds to configure it. So I will do that and you'll see it should recognize the 8-bit Doe controller right away. And it does. Then you just go through the different buttons to map them. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger. Push in the left thumb, push in the right thumb. Then you go through your left analogs and your right analogs. The hotkey you're gonna need to go back to the menu and do other functions. I'm going to assign that to the L3 button. And this is your RetroPie menu. We don't have any systems showing because we haven't added any ROMs yet. You can push A to go into the RetroPie configuration. One of the first things that people recommend doing is updating RetroPie to the newest version. To do that, go to RetroPie Setup and hit the A button. You'll be taken to this menu right here. Select the Update option. This will ask if you want to update your installed packages. This can take a very long time. Some people have reported it takes a couple hours to do this. So we don't have to do this, but if you want everything up to date, you're going to hit yes here. I'll leave you to do that on your own. For now, we're just gonna focus on adding the ROMs and BIOS files. So what we need here is our IP address. If we go down to show IP, we're given our IP address at the top. Once you've written that down, hit the A button on OK. So with the Raspberry Pi still turned on and RetroPie active, we have to go back to our computer to add the ROMs and BIOS files. And you're gonna to go to this address bar right here, delete whatever's in there. You're gonna hit backslash, backslash twice. It's the key above the enter key. And then you're gonna enter the address that was on your RetroPie. Ours was 10.0.0.238. Then hit enter. This is the file system of your Raspberry Pi. You can see here, it's pretty cut and dry what you need to do and where things need to go. You open up the BIOS folder. This is where your BIOS files will go. So all I'm gonna do is copy my BIOS files, drag them into that folder. This is actually very fast. Things move very fast over the network. Now all my BIOS files are where I want them to be. I'm going to back up, go into the ROMs folder. And in this folder here, you will see all the systems that RetroPie has support for. I don't see it listed here, but I believe it also has Dreamcast and Nintendo DS support. We may have to do an update to get those files on here. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some Game Boy ROMs and then drag them over to the Game Boy folder. There they are. A few NES games, Super Nintendo. How about a PS1 game too? And there you go. So everything seems to be in place. We're gonna go back over to RetroPie and we'll continue. So once you've moved your BIOS files and ROMs over, the next step is to go back into RetroPie, hit start to access the menu, go down to quit and you have to restart emulation station for those changes to take effect. After it's been restarted, you can see here that now all the games that we added have a folder for them. Let's go into Super Nintendo. These are all the games that we added. If you push left and right in these menus, it'll go from system to system. Pushing the B button will take you back to the main menu. Let's take a quick look into these games real quick. Let's look at ActRaiser 2 to begin with. You can see here the game started up just fine. To access the RetroArch menu, you're gonna push down the hotkey that you assigned earlier and hit the X button. From this menu, you have a lot of options available to you. One of the options I prefer using is by linear filtering. You can get there by going to settings, video, push up to go to the bottom of the list, 
and right here is bilinear filtering. Pushing left and right will turn that on. You'll see that the sprites have this filter over them that makes them a little more smoothed out. To restart the game, you can hold down that hotkey button and push B. And to return to the menu, hold down the hotkey button and push Start. Started up a Game Boy game here. This looks like Kid Dracula. I like that the default setting the game has is for the green and gray filter. I, I really like this filter and I think it gives the game a more authentic look. And here's Bonk's Adventure for the NES. Running fine, looking really nice. And here we have Silent Hill running on the Raspberry Pi 3. Seems to be running at full speed. I'm not seeing any lag here. You can see that it looks like the game has this kind of wire film over it. So if we go into the RetroArch options, go down to options, select it, down to enable dithering. If you disable this, return to the game, you'll see that has been removed. Another option you might be interested in is the enhanced resolution option. If we enable that, then return to the game, you'll see that the game has become much sharper. So there you go, just a real quick first time setup on using RetroPie with your Raspberry Pi 3B+. I have a couple more things I'm planning on going over like adding new themes and menu music, so make sure you keep coming by for that. I hope this video was useful to you, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.